So I'm getting everything ready for the air ride. FedEx shows up. Looks like I got the radiator and the radiator shroud. I'm going to unbox it real quick just to take a peek, make sure everything looks like it's supposed to. So I went with the Champion 3-row Pro Radiator. It should cool up to, I believe, 700 horsepower. We're not going to be near that, so we should have plenty of cooling with this radiator. I believe this is the shroud. Put the fans in the box. And this is what the, the aluminum shroud looks like. It's actually really nice. It's got a protective coating on it to protect it. It's the Champion 3 core radiator. You can see this, but here's the radiator. That should cool the car plenty. I'm not going to open it right now. We're going to be getting to installing this shortly. Everything looks good. I'm going to put this back in the box for now. I also got in the AC condenser. So the radiator and the shroud are here. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're working back on the 52 Chevy. This time we're going to be working on the radiator. So this is a three core champion aluminum radiator. And before we go throwing this into the truck, which is where it's going to end up by the end of this video, I'm going to take this inside. I'm going to cover all these pretty little fins with actual cardboard. And I'm going to wrap the rest of this pretty aluminum here with blue painter's tape because we'll be taking it in and out of the truck a lot. I don't want to scratch it all up. So the painter tape will actually help protect it a little bit. The cardboard covering the fins will keep them from getting bent at all. Once the radiator is all protected, we're going to come back out to the truck. Hopefully this radiator will fit right down inside, but with the tune port injection motor in there, it's going to be a really tight fit between the radiator, the shroud, and the fan. So we're going to find out very soon. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the actual fin area of the radiator. I'm going to trace that out onto the actual box that the radiator came in. I'm going to cut two pieces out for the front and back of the radiator, get rid of the rest of the box, and then tape up the radiator. So this thing is ready to get mocked up in the truck right now. I left the brackets on the sides exposed because we will be bolting on the radiator shroud and that's where it bolts to the truck so I'm not too worried about that. All right, so I'm back out in the garage right now with the radiator all nicely covered up and secured. So when we do put this in the truck right now, it's not gonna get all scraped up. So right now we're gonna get the truck Lower it all the way back down to the ground. Open up the single car garage door so we have a little more room to work. We're going to take the hood off the truck. We're going to see how this is going to fit in there. So we're going to do that right now. So right now we're going to pull the hood off the truck. Get this out of the way so it's not in our way when we're working on the radiator. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove this panel right here, which will give us perfect access to the front and back side of the radiator mount. That'll clear this out of here. This is only a couple bolts to get this out. So we're gonna take this out right now. We'll have full access to everything we need to get to. You can see we don't have a lot of space, but if we mount the radiator on the inside here, on this inside bracket here versus the outside bracket, that'll give us another two inches of clearance. And then we should have plenty of clearance. So I think that's what we're gonna end up doing. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut the lift of this radiator bracket off. That way allow me the rate to slip the radiator right down inside here without that getting in the way. Now in theory, the radiator is gonna go something like this. Take the radiator. It should fit between the two like that. I need this it's just too far in the way to get in there so the seam here is broken so I'm gonna cut most of this off anyway and I'll re-weld this in here and make it nice and secure we're gonna get rid of this lip right along here right now don't really need it it's just in the way if you've never used these things before these silver sharpies are awesome for marking on 
dark metal surfaces. Silver line right across here, that's where we're gonna cut it off right now. Definitely need to clean this joint up and re-weld it. I'll do that next, just to get that done and over with. So there's the lip off right now. This is no longer needed. It's a lot more flimsy now, but the radiator will be bolted in here and it'll kind of help add some support to it. Let me put the flap wheel on here and just clean this up right now. And get ready to fix the, the broken weld over here. So how's this audio sound? So I got some some new wireless microphones I'm using right now. I was curious if this is any better than the stock audio that all my other videos had. So comment down below in the video. Let me know what you think of this audio. Right now I'm using a synchro wireless mic system with a lapel right here. So comment down below and let me know what you think of the audio versus the past videos. This is the first video I'm actually using this microphone with. And I'm going to hit it with some acid matonage. All I'm using is dollar store nail polish remover. Works just like acetone because it is 100% acetone. Now I'm just going to try to throw some tacks on it right here. That's the bad spot. It should be relatively strong, strong enough. I could always brace this right here if I had to. But I think this is just really just gonna bolt to the fenders on this side, the radiator bolts to this. I think we'll be in good shape. So I just set the radiator support in place and I set the radiator fan shroud in place. I've got the fan over there. Um, I'm just seeing how much room I have. I think it's really close. Right now, if this is like this, it's the biggest problem is this, the water pump pulley, which is all wonky, because that's not tightened. Trying to think of how I can pull this forward about an inch or two. I've got about two inches here. The problem is if I do that, I'm gonna be hitting the front and I almost need to remove this entire front piece, but I need that in place for the front shroud that goes here. So I might just zip off this edge on both sides of this bracket and then mount the radiator on the other side, have it angled more, make a standoff back here to bolt to with a captivated nut maybe, that'd be pretty easy. I need to make some brackets off of here to mount AC condenser. What's nice is we got so much room in here to work with. I'm really thinking of just cutting this lip off and getting it bolted down into place and going from there. So right now I'm gonna cut the front lip of the radiator support off, this whole section. So when I slide the radiator in, I'll be able to slide it all the way in forward. We'll just mock up brackets where you want it to stop and this lip won't be in the way anymore. So allow the radiator in. So I'm just marking it just shy of a quarter inch off, all the way down. I'm gonna take the straight edge, mark it. So we're gonna cut that completely off right there. Won't be needed anymore because we are shifting the radiator forward in the truck. So we're gonna cut this side off right now. We'll flip it over, do the other side, mock it back up in the truck. Okay, we got that side all cut off. I'm gonna flip this over, mark it, and cut the other side off. grinder slipped out of my hand and shot that to the moon. So I got that other broken wheel off. I'm gonna plop on the new wheel. It's just from Harbor Freight, nothing special. Now we just need to cut this little section here. We're done with the cutting. Now we're gonna change the cutting wheel off, put the flap wheel on, clean up that edge. All right, so this is all nicely cleaned up. We're gonna set this back in place over in the front of the truck and see how the radiator's gonna fit in now. It'll slide in there nice and easy like this. That's gonna bolt in place like that. And the radiator is going to go in here like this. I have to 
trim this down now to properly fit inside here. I'm gonna have to cut the bracket that holds the radiator in place around the center hole out because it is getting in the way for the bolts that come through on the sides here. It's getting in the way uh, the support. So I'm gonna have to notch that out a little bit. Not even that much. Let me get a measurement on that so I know exactly where that's gonna go. That way this will slide forward even more and that'll work out perfect. This cover will go back on here. It's gonna mark with the black Sharpie where the, the two captive nuts in this piece are in the way. Go a little above it, a little below it if I can. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Modify this side and then I'll make that side match this side. Yeah. That's why we have this thing protected. I'm probably gonna drill a hole here, drill a hole down here, and then just zip along the two sides and have nice rounded edges. It's nice as this is aluminum, it'll drill very easily. I'm gonna flip you over on the other side here so you can see a little better what I'm doing. So between here and here, I wanna notch out right in here. That way it'll fit around the captivated bolts that are on the inside of the actual radiator support. So what we're gonna do is figure out exactly where we wanna do this. I'm actually gonna drill holes where those dots are. Those aren't the cut lines. I'm gonna use the cutoff wheel on the grinder to just zip here here and down there. Not perfect, but that'll work. And we're gonna repeat it on this side. So we need it to go one and three quarters inch above this hole and two and seven eighths below the hole. See what happens now when we try to put this in here. There we go. This is what I'm going for right here. That amount of gap right along here would be absolutely perfect. I think I just need to shave the, the ears down a little bit to fit because they're a little bit too wide to fit between here. Like that. Am I? There we go. It's cramming in there, but it's working. Actually, that's what's going to go like just like that. Go like that. Shroud. It's gonna go on like that. And down there. Right now I'm not sure if the hood is actually gonna fit on top of the truck with the radiator sticking up that high. Right down here, I have the tray that I could cut, get that out of the way, which might allow me to drop this down the two inches I need. And that would be perfect, two, two and a half inches. The problem is on the other side of there, right down in there, right down there is the steering box. Now, I can easily move those hoses to the side, but how do I handle the rest? I mean, there might be a couple inches. Let me pull the radiator back out and look to see what I can do to modify that and then possibly modify that lower tray and cut that right along there to give the radiator clearance. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna mark a line right down along this tray down here. We're gonna cut that line out. That'll allow the radiator to slide right down in here. It should give us a little more clearance. So there's the steering box. You can see that better right now that I've repositioned the light. So I've got a good inch that I can come down right here before hitting. If I slide it, make the line this side, I can slide that radiator even forward even more and get that down in there. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna mark where we wanna cut here. Right along 
down there or something. I'll measure down on both sides here, over on this side here, and then we'll just do a straight line across. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. We're about marking that and cutting that out of the way. So I marked it three quarters inch down on both sides. Now I need to throw a straight edge on there, which just fits in there perfectly. Got some 5 16 bolts we're gonna use putting these holes right here just to hold it in place for right now. All right, so I got the two bolts on the bottom of the passenger side bolted in, and I got the two bolts on the driver's side bolted in. Now these bolts actually go through the front end support that hooks to the frame or with a, a rubber bushing. So that actually adds support to the front of the truck now, which it didn't have before just mocking this up. So right now, both sides are done. I just need to get the top two bolts on here and on this side, and then we'll be ready to go to mock up the actual radiator. We're getting there. All right, so the first thing we need to do now is we need to actually bolt the fan to the actual radiator shroud down here. Now I'm gonna mark four holes, one, two, three, four, with the Sharpie. Now I know where I need to drill. I've got little quarter inch screws and I've got four lock nuts. They'll actually hold this right to the shroud itself. fully on here now. That's not going anywhere. Make it some blue tape and just cover up a couple of these spots that are starting to peel. Don't want scratches. It's coming along pretty good. Right now we're just testing to see where we want the radiator actually positioned. Do I need to go at that severe of an angle? I don't think I need to. I think where I have it cut right now is good and right where this is is good. Maybe just up. So I don't want it resting right on the gearbox, but it can be close. So right now I've got the radiator clamped in place. I drew a, a silver Sharpie line right along here. So you can actually see where it's sitting level. It's exactly three and five eighths here and three and five eighths right here. You can see down in here, we've got the tab to the radiator. I need to hold that off about an inch and an eighth but it's a straight shot down. So I almost need to make four one and one eighth inch tab that can, I can weld in here at like little 90 degree bends in here. Same on both sides. And then the spacing we're looking at, I should have plenty of room. Those bolts on the uh, water pump won't be sticking out because we're not gonna have a fan on there. We're actually gonna have a, a radiator shroud on here. Right now I have a cardboard in here bumped up against front cross member for the radiator bracket. That cardboard's gonna go away, which will give us about an eighth of an inch gap. Plus I'll bump this out just a smidgen more just to make sure we're clear. I think we're in pretty good shape. Let me make up some brackets real quick and see if they'll fit. So I actually found this one and a quarter inch angle iron. It's a one and a quarter inch four foot section of just 14 gauge steel. This will actually work out perfect. So all I have to do, it can stick out one and a quarter inches. But then all I have to do is just nick off about a little eighth of an inch or so to give it the one and eighth inch that we want to stick out from. Yeah, I literally have to knock off an eighth of an inch on one side of this thing. Then we'll be actually perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut four one and a half inch pieces of this on the bandsaw right now. Then we'll just trim that little eighth inch off all four sides and then all the brackets will essentially be done. Right now, I've got this bracket kind of taped in place where it's gonna get welded into on both sides. And I have the hole marked where we need to actually put the bolt. It looks the same on both sides, which is good. So now we're gonna take these back out and we're gonna drill the holes, captivate the nuts, put these back in place and tack weld them in place to make sure they're still gonna fit correctly. If they do fit like they should, then we will weld them in place permanently.
right now we've got the two brackets with the captivated nuts in them. I'm gonna take the bolts out, hit these with the wire wheel real quick just to knock off this little, I'm not sure what the hell that crap is that uh, formed on them. It's like this white powdery substance. I'm just gonna hit them with the flap wheel real quick or I'll probably take them to the grinder with the wire wheel. Wire brush these down. Then we're gonna put them in the truck and tack weld them into place. We're not gonna fully weld them. Just a little tack here and there to make sure they're in the right position. Then we'll bolt the uh, radiator into place with these brackets and then figure out the bottom brackets. Get those situated, fully weld everything in. This is the passenger side one. That should go right around here. We're just gonna throw two tacks on it just to hold it in place. One in the middle here, one in the middle there. these like I did the last time. All right, so right now we're going to be welding the brackets we just welded the nuts onto in the two lower sections of this radiator support. So now I have all four radiator brackets tacked in place. I'm going to attempt to bolt the radiator into place using those brackets. Boom, we're done. We've got the brackets all in place. Fantastic. So I'm gonna slot these right here. Because I'm using washers anyway, it's not gonna come off. It'll make it easier to get this on. We've got this all slotted right now in all four corners. We're gonna back on the truck. Right now I have the radiator completely bolted in place with the shroud, perfect clearance between the actual radiator fan and the water pump pulley, as well as the bottom of the radiator and the steering gearbox. Perfect clearance all around there. So this is fully bolted in place now for mock-up. The next thing we need to worry about is working on the actual AC condenser. So right here I have a universal AC condenser, straight from China. This is what it looks like. We're gonna go stick this in the front of the truck right now just to make sure it's gonna be the right size. It'd be really easy just to make a couple brackets to bolt this on in front of the truck. We're just gonna set this in front of the truck right now just to make sure it's gonna be the right size. Then we'll cover the fins with cardboard just like we did the radiator to make sure they're protected. But let's go to the front of the truck right now and just see how it's gonna fit. This is going to go in here just like this. I'm gonna mount it as low as possible because that's where the airflow is coming through. And this should actually be really easy to make brackets for. I found a couple pieces of wood that are exactly what I'm looking for. Right now, they're just about, just shy of three quarters of an inch, which is absolutely perfect because by the time you got the thickness of the cardboard and the thickness of the cardboard on the radio that we have, it'll be just probably shy of, just a little bit over three quarters of an inch spaced out away from the radiator. So it'll be actually, actually perfect. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna cut these down, 
and act as spacers right in here, just like this. And I might cut the cardboard out in here if I want to actually bring it a little bit closer, but I don't think we're gonna really need to. I think we'll be okay. Let's just say it's 14 inches. I'll cut two of these at 14 inches, and then we'll figure out how we're gonna tape them onto the actual AC condenser. There's the AC condenser. So I want to attach these two just to the back like this to add as a spacer. Now we've got the spacers right where we want them, three quarters inch off of the radiator itself. The AC condenser will be spaced out exactly how we want it to be. Now we're gonna go back to the front of the truck right now and try to get this positioned in the place where we want it. Then we can start working on the actual fab of the brackets that are gonna go on both sides. We're gonna have two brackets on this side, two brackets on the other side. So here, the spacers give us the exact spacing we need to be off the radiator, just like that. Really just winging it how we want this positioned in here to get the brackets made. I just need to make a bracket here and down below, here and then down below on the other side. Up here it might be easy to just use the same angle iron we used to make the bracket for the radiator. Right here, boop, right to there, done. This side, boop, right to there. So it might go even on both sides here and then again right down below. So we're going to cut these two brackets along those angles that we have here and that'll get us relatively close to where we want these. So I've got these brackets clamped down to the welding table, perfectly smooth. Everything's cleaned up, ready to weld. We're gonna weld the back sides first because you're not gonna see that side. So we're gonna just get these tacked in place with the back side. We'll flip them over, then we'll run a nice bead down the front side that you'll see. And then we'll cut these to fit the actual bracket shape so that we'll have the exact perfect angle that we need for both of these brackets on both sides. Then we will clean up the radiator bracket and get these welded in over there and the top brackets will be done for the condenser. So we've got these brackets fully welded. Now we just need to cut off the ears on them, wire a flap wheel down, just the front sides to smooth them out, make them nice looking. Then we'll get them welded in the truck. So I'm gonna hold this here. I'm just gonna one spot there, come over here, zing it one spot there. That way we know it's held flush, and then I'll come back and really whack it in there good. We've got the top two brackets completely welded in place now. Now we just need to figure out the bottom two brackets. We're probably gonna end up doing it the exact same way we did the top brackets. That seems to be the easiest way, so let's do that. All right, so while we are waiting for the brackets, I just welded and captivated nuts on to cool off a little bit. Took the AC condenser out. I marked where the bottom brackets are actually gonna go, here and here. I need to drill these out to a quarter inch. I'll do it right now. We're gonna get this bolted back in place. And then once those brackets are cooled off, we're gonna bolt those brackets on and figure out the rest of the bracket we need to make, just like we did the top bracket. So this is what the brackets look like. Pretty sturdy, they're not going anywhere. Um, we'll clean them up a little bit during final assembly, make them look nicer. Although no one's gonna see them. And those things are pretty solid in there. So we're gonna drill these holes right now real quick. Now that we've got everything drilled out on this, we're gonna bolt this back in place to the two top brackets and knock up the bottom brackets. Nice and snug. That's gonna come out absolutely perfect. Let's grab the other brackets, get those bolted in place. All right, so we're gonna bolt on the bottom brackets that I made right here. Captivated the nuts on the back side, just like we did for the top brackets, just like we did for the radiator bracket. We're gonna bolt these into place where they're gonna go. Then we're gonna figure out how to fab up the remaining part of the bracket, because these aren't gonna be long enough to actually hit the radiator support. So we're gonna do that right now. This bracket right here, you can see, isn't touching the actual radiator bracket. It's got about an inch away that we're missing. 
Same on the, the passenger side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of metal, slightly taller than an inch, set the piece in there, trace it, cut this, weld it, just like we did the top. We had to extend the top bracket. That worked out absolutely perfect. We're going to do the exact same thing on the bottom now. I've got one of these made up for both sides. Hopefully this is enough space to actually fill what we need to fill in down there. I'm going to do the same exact thing that we did. Make sure this is pushed in nice and tight, which it looks like it is. Slide this down here. Oh yeah, this one's going to be perfect. Kind of just center it where we want it, right there. Then I'm going to trace, hopefully. Perfect. Flat side's marked. We're going to take that bracket off, weld that piece on as a spacer like we want. And now we're going to mark up the passenger side. And I'm going to hold the pencil best I can and mark it. Oh, I think I just broke the tip off. Got it. Perfect. I'm going to mark in here, right down here and right over here, where we need to actually clean up with a half-inch belt sander. Right there, right in here along the radiator bracket. So we're clean when we need to weld. I'm going to mark it now while these brackets are still on. Then we'll take those brackets off, get those brackets all welded up in place, size to the right shape just like we did the top brackets. We'll come over here with the half-inch belt sander, clean up where we need to clean, bolt the brackets back on, tack the brackets back in with the welder. And then we'll take the AC condenser off, remove those three-quarter inch spacers behind it. Kind of see on here where I have it marked. This line right along here is where we're cutting to match up to the correct angle that we need. So let's get those cut and all welded together. So I got both the passenger side and the driver side lower brackets completely fabricated with the correct angle along the bottom. We'll bolt these into place, we'll weld these into place. But before we do that, we just have to clean up the sides of the radiator bracket. So it's nice and clean metal for welding. We're gonna do that right now, get these tacked into place, and we are gonna be done. So I got the sandpaper changed out on the half inch belt sander. I got the AC condenser removed. We're gonna clean up where we need to weld right now. Get the AC condenser bolted back in place, get the lower brackets bolted on, get the lower brackets welded in place, and we will be 100% done with the radiator and AC condenser mock up. Let's do it. All right, everyone, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. As you can see, we got the radiator and the AC condenser completely mocked up 100%. We had to custom fabricate the brackets for the radiator as well as for the AC condenser. They are now 100% finished, 100% complete. So now we can move on to the steering in the next video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go over to somebody else's video and give it a thumbs down. Don't really go to somebody else's video and thumbs down it, that's just a dick move. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification icon down below so you know when future videos do come out, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.